Hi there. I had a dream uh, a couple days ago that is just really heavy on my heart that I feel like the Lord wants me to share. In this dream, me and my husband and my daughter was riding down the road and we had um, the responsibility of taking care of someone's uh, property. And I know that uh, the owner of this property in the dream represents God. But we were um, traveling down the road to these properties and we were checking on them. And my husband was about to drive by one set of properties, uh, a garage in another building, and, and he just wanted to keep going because he was in a hurry and he just didn't want to fool with it. And I was like, no, we haven't checked on this in three days. We have to check on this property, pull in here. And so he did, he pulled in and I said, besides, I said, there's uh there was a little there was a big garage and right beside the garage there was a, a little building and in that building was a dog that needed food and water and to be let out to use the bathroom and needed care and we hadn't been there to take care of him in three days and i was like we have to take care of this dog pull in here well when we pulled in i saw that the garage door was open i mean it, it was a huge garage like a commercial garage not the garage on a house but a huge commercial garage and the door was up and and the it was at night and the lights was we left the lights on it was really brightly lit and i was like oh my gosh the last time we were here we left the door open and we left the garage the, the door open and we left the lights on in there i said oh i know somebody has stolen the stuff but i could see that there was still stuff in the building and so we went on into the building and sure enough there was thieves in the building and some of the some of the thieves were upstairs and when i looked up it was like a recording studio up there it was kind of open and i could see the sound equipment and the recording stuff and there was like five or six men up there and i knew they were thieves and they were on the sound equipment and they were talking and uh laughing and just having a good old time and I thought oh no I pray they don't steal that and um, and over to my right there was a bunch more thieves and they were like I don't know four or five six more thieves and they were going through the stuff and they were choosing what they wanted to take and I started to walk right over to them and tell them to get out of here this is not your stuff and uh, but my, my husband said no that's dangerous I'll do that I'll take care of that so he went over to these th to where these thieves were and he come back in a few minutes and he, he told me that he had made a bargain with them. He had made a deal with them. That he was going to let them take a couple things from the building if they would leave everything else. And they agreed and that's what they were going to do. And uh, so we were standing there by the door. And then here come the, the, the men, the thieves. And, uh, me and it was me and my daughter and my husband standing by the door. By the door. And... Uh, I didn't trust them, and I was afraid they were going to pull out a gun and shoot us, is what I thought. So I stepped in front of my daughter to protect her, because I, you know, just to protect her. And uh, they stopped, and the leader of these thieves laughed at us and mocked us. And, and that we would even think that we could make a deal with him, that he would actually, that, that, that he would actually honor a deal that we had made with him. And, uh, and he went ahead... Uh, out the door and one of some of them grabbed my daughter and drug her out back and they raped her they were raping her and and I went outside and it was dark and we were behind the garage and I was frantically searching and there was a big pot of oil I don't really know what that means the, the oil was not hot but I looked in the pot of oil for her and she wasn't there and I turned it over to make sure she was not in there and I could hear her and I could hear them raping her and I was just it, I was absolutely horrified and I was still horrified when I woke up by this this whole dream experience but then after I poured out the oil there was a, a doghouse there and I thought that he had her inside that doghouse raping her and I could I could hear I could hear the rape happening and I was sticking my hand it moves me to emotion just think of it but I put my hand in there and I was feeling around because it was dark and I was trying to find her and I woke up and the Lord didn't, didn't give me the interpretation of this dream. He gave it to my husband, most of it. And then the Lord did give me some more interpretation of it. And what this dream represents, the, the garage itself represents the church. And uh, me and my husband represent 
unfaithful leadership, uh, just being slothful with the things of God and not taking care of God's people. And I know it might be an insult to some, but in this dream, the dog that needed care in the little building was the sheep, God's sheep that needs care, and they were being neglected. That dog was being neglected and he wasn't being fed or cared for at all. And of course the thieves represent Satan, um, the enemy uh, that's infiltrated the church. And the things that were inside the church, the, 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 the stuff inside the garage represents different things, things that belong to God, but but I believe that the revelation of this is that it represents the gifts of God, which is the word, the reason that we came to that conclusion along, you know, with the Lord pointing things out and helping us to understand it was the recording, the, the words, the, the words that's put forth was uh, overtaken by the enemy and the gifts of the Spirit, which are all, uh, they're in Ephesians 12, words of wisdom, words of knowledge, prophecy, tongues, interpretation of tongues, discernments, discerning of spirits, uh, healing miracles, and faith. And the church, so much of the church has rejected. They've, what they've done is allowed the enemy to come in and to steal that. And that is a manifestation of God. The gifts of the, of the Lord is, is God. So when we reject the gifts, we reject God himself. We reject his word, his voice. So therefore, the words that's coming out of the church are just man's word. And so much, so much of the church has rejected the gifts of the Holy Spirit. They have rejected God. The church has rejected God. And it's because of the enemy and making a deal with the devil and saying, you know, we'll keep this. We want this part of God, but this part, no, we don't want this part. And we'll take this, but no, we don't want this. And uh, just letting the enemy take and steal. And so what comes out of the church is poison. It's not, most of it, it's not even truth. And this is what, this is the revelation on my daughter being raped. This is what that is. My daughter in this dream represented, represents this generation. And the enemy has our, you know, it is continuing to happen, but it's already happened. Look around you at this generation, how Satan has taken this generation and has raped them. I mean, he has planted his seeds in this generation. And it's because they're, because God has been rejected in the church, because the church has allowed the enemy to come in. And, you know, we are in a day of visitation. God is going to, God is going to come and he's going to, a lot of things is about to happen and God's going to make some corrections. But I just want to say to you that if you're in a church that they reject God, if they don't fully embrace God, listen, I want to tell you something. All the gifts of God are good. Don't let nobody tell you that tongues is not good, interpretation of tongues. If you think it's not, it's because you don't understand it. You need to do some studying. You need to go to the Word of God and read what it has to say. And don't listen to leaders that, that tells you this stuff is not real or not good. Prophecy, tongues, interpretation of tongues, all the gifts of the Spirit are good. And we need them. And the reason that the church has not done its job, the church has failed failed miserably and the reason is is because the church had for a large part and I ain't saying everybody but do you know who you are if you're one if you're a church leader stand rebuked by the by God himself that you better you better not do that because I'm telling you a day of reckoning is at your door and God is going to come and he's going to fix things he's going to change things mm. there is a day of reckoning and we're, it's, it's right at your door right now. And I want to tell you that if you are in a church and, and your leadership rejects the Word of God, if they reject the Spirit of God, if they reject words of wisdom and words of knowledge and prophecy, and if they think, you know, even if you're in a church that they, they act like God can't use or flow through nobody but them, you're in the wrong church. Get out. Get out. That's not what the, the Word of God says. The Word of God says that we can all prophesy. Now, we're not all prophets, but we can all prophesy. And we're supposed to judge prophecies to see if they're truly of God. But how can you judge a prophecy if you won't let anybody prophesy? So, just, uh, just you know, today, you know, I'm just, I feel the grief of the Lord. Because the same as I just felt horrified that my daughter was being raped. You know what? God's daughter is being raped. And he ain't happy about it. He is not happy about it. 
So, like I said in an earlier video, the Lord is about to visit this earth, and He is going to set uh, the captive free. He's going to bring deliverance to His daughter, to His children, and He's going to set the church in order. So, just make sure that you're on the right side, that you're listening to the Lord, that you're and you're being obedient to the Lord. Thanks for watching. Bye bye.